Well, this is my sweet little Vienna's birthday, so today she and her brother Giallo are going to be on a card. With these two stamps from Impression Obsession, I thought I'd show you how to do a card that it looks like there's something close in the foreground and something more distant. So I've stamped the foreground dog in full black ink and the other dog and person that came together in one stamp. Uh, these are two separate purchases, however. The second stamp I stamped off first. So I had it in my Misty. I stamped it onto a piece of scratch paper and then pulled the scratch paper out and immediately stamped it onto my finished paper and that gave me that lighter gray kind of a look. Because what that means is I can go ahead and paint it almost full strength and it's going to look like it's in the distance because I don't have as heavy a black line as on the stamp in the foreground. And I do have to make this card look like a foreground and background kind of card simply because the proportions are completely off. If I had put the two of them as though they were on the same plane, on the same ground, it would have looked like we had a giant dog <laughs> right next to me and Giallo. So we're letting, uh, letting Giallo look like he's over there with me in the distance and Vienna is up in the front. There's also a heart that goes with the little dog stamp in the front. And I did have to do a little masking and then make that heart higher up because it normally would be right where Giallo's head is. So I had to fix that. It would be easier to do what I did by just cutting the heart off and moving it, it, like cutting the actual stamp, but I decided to try to just move it up myself because eventually these stamps will make it into my giveaway stamps box. I do kind of regular-ish giveaways of packages of stamps to various students who have taken my classes or people who've commented on my blog, etc. Just random happy giveaways because I can't keep all the stamps I will probably keep these for a while though because they are dog stamps, but I do try not to maul them by cutting them apart if uh, I can possibly do that since I want somebody else to, to get a not completely mauled stamp set. If you're trying something like this to make one image look like it's further back than the other and you're stamping them both at full strength, then go much lighter with the color on the stamp in the background because the way that light works when you're looking at something further away from you, there's more light cascading between your eye and the object, so it's going to look lighter. But since I stamped with a lighter ink by doing that stamping off technique, I can paint heavier color in here because it's going to automatically look lighter because it doesn't have the big heavy outline that the stamp in the foreground has. So I'm just using a bunch of different yellows and browns to try to create that that kind of color that Giallo has and it kept getting too bright and then I had to dull it down and then got brighter and etc as things happen when we watercolor. I'm adding some perylene maroon into my quinacridone pink. If you've always looked for a nice dark red, perylene maroon is one of my new colors that's been added to my palette. Speaking of which, if you're interested in what colors are in this and seeing swatches of them and why I picked them, if you look up Sandy Alnock 2019 palette, then you will find a video that has all of my palettes in it and kind of why I picked a lot of these colors and swatches of them compared to other colors that you can see whether or not you like a color like that. But the Paraline Maroon is a nice dark, dark red, which I really like. And I also have Paraline Green in here in my palette and it has the same effect. It's a nice, deep, dark, rich green. And sometimes I don't like to mix up really dark colors. So having those two has been really helpful in my palette so far. Now a little bit about Vienna since this is her birthday. Well, I don't know that it's her birthday. We think it's her birthday. Given the date that she came to me and came to live with me and they guessed at about her approximate age, I picked this as her birthday. So just because it was a random date. So we celebrate it every year. We're probably gonna do a little dog park run today because that's her favorite thing in the world to do, except for what she's doing on this card, which is sitting and looking at me and barking. She's got some great Pyrenees in her. And I looked up some 
properties of Great Pyrenees dogs. And they are farm dogs who love to wander. They love to just kind of walk the perimeter of the property. And they don't listen to anybody. They just love to go out and do their thing and guard. And that is Vienna entirely. She loves to just be outside and guard from any squirrel or a bird or a person walking down the street, or maybe there's another dog somewhere two blocks over. And she's got to let everybody know that she is in charge and she's here and she's keeping watch. So I thought this stamp for her would be perfect. And even though I'm hugging her brother on this card, she does not get jealous in that way. Giallo gets jealous. If I'm hugging Vienna, he will come over here and, and totally knock her out of the way so that he can get a little bit of loving. But she's very content. She's such a peaceful, calm dog in that way that she doesn't get jealous and strange that way. So I decided on this, my scene was going to be that I'm sitting on the ground with Giallo on a hillside, and I'm going to paint another hill on the further side of us, but I'm going to create some shadows here in the, the foreground section, so adding more, more darker colors as I get closer and closer to the, the very foreground. I'll put a lot more color underneath of where Vienna's sitting, because that's going to give that illusion of that being much closer than, than the place where Giallo and I are sitting. And that's where those dark greens are going to come in. This is sap green I'm adding. That was serpentine earlier. This is sap green. And it's been, sap green has been in my palette for a long time. But this is the perline green. And look how dark and rich that is. And it doesn't require a lot of mixing to make it happen, which I really like because I've always had to mix my sap green with something else to get a nice rich dark green. And especially since I've had my, my new class out, the Casting Shadows class, and I'm going to be doing a lot more with stronger shadows now that I at least have that class out there. I can point people to that when they want to learn more about actual shadows under objects. And this was going to be a super great color to help me to create some of those really strong shadows. So I'm trying to create that, that shadow with the light coming from the right hand side, shadow cast off to the left with darkest colors in the front. And here's that hillside that we can put out in the far distance. And I'm using the serpentine green again, just really lightly at the top and then letting some water carry it down toward the the bottom section of that hillside. It gives the impression that there's some distance there, that we're sitting on a hill, but that we're still outside and it's still a pretty scene. Really simple way to make a card with a bunch of different levels of depth of field. And the last part that's going to be left is to create a sky of some kind. I was thinking about creating a sky and then putting a line of trees in and then I thought, you know, I'm just going to leave it nice and simple. And with the sky, I'm just going to throw in some of my, my blues. Now there's two sky type of blues in my palette. There's um, the electric blue, which is a really more of a blue blue. And cobalt teal blue is more of a, a very pale teal. But it makes a really beautiful sky because it's got some nice granulation in it. Granulation is where it gets that little bit of texture. And I really enjoy that on a card as well. So really simple, just lots of water and then dropping in some color here and there to create a nice summery, even though it's not summery, but create a nice summery sky. So we'll be looking forward to living out this scene in the near future when the weather starts getting nicer. We still go out, but we don't get to sit on the ground because where I live, the ground is wet until like summer. <laughs> so there you go. A little more affirmation of my shadows there. And then once it's all dry, I put it into my misty and add a cinnamon to it. Cinnamon is also by Impression Obsession. And I thought it would be perfect for a message from Vienna. We are her favorites. Even though she's sitting over there by herself, she's like, yo, barky, barky, there's a squirrel over there. You're my favorites. I'm watching out for you because that's what I always picture her saying. She's always saying nice things because she's got a happy bark, but she can't not bark. 
at whatever is off in the distance that she sees. So anyway, happy birthday to Vienna, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and have an awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye.